good morning students today let me start with a, a new topic what is known as rabbit type study so type study as you know that it includes the study of some different uh, features of this body of this rabbit like morphology and some anatomy uh, anatomical features of the systems like the digestive system respiratory system nervous system and excretory system as well as the reproductive system so in this slide you will observe that uh, the morphology of that uh, rabbit and that is for your reference uh, let me continue with the explanation from the next slide onwards uh, this rabbit it is uh, an animal a mammalian animal which is included under the following systematic position it belongs to phylum chordata subphylum vertebrata class mammalia subclass theria infra class eutheria order logomorpha and the type is arctolagus cuniculus and this arctolagus cuniculus is commonly known as european grey rabbit and almost all the rabbits they have almost the same features except for some minor differences in general rabbit furnishes an excellent material for dissection and study that means it has been widely used in uh, different uh, experimental research works in different laboratories and it has close structural similarities to man that's why it has been used in research work extensively this arctolagus cuniculus is cosmopolitan in distribution and it is found in fields grasslands and open woodlands and it is a fusorial animal that means fast running animal found in dense forests and it digs burrows called the warren with the help of strongly clawed fore limbs and the rabbits are gregarious animals and they live and move in groups of families and they are herbivores in diet feeding on green vegetation usually near the warren they are corpuscular sorry crepuscular in habit that is which is coming out of the burrows for feeding in twilight chiefly at dawn and dusk so only these times they used to come out of this by come out of their uh, what do you call this uh, burrows what are called as warrens technically and hence these are referred to as crepuscular in habit and they resort to reflex sorry reflection or coprophagy a very unique mechanism or very interesting thing that by eating their soft night droppings without mastication see in the previous night they used to Uh, cast off or the uh, remove their uh, uh, the, their fecal matter and the next day morning they used to consume the same and that phenomenon is what is called as refection or coprophagy that means they eat their own fecal matter the same food thus passes twice through the gut to produce maximum nourishment so to get out all that nutrients that are present in the food that they consume they do this a kind of behavior rabbit is very timid and defenseless but very clever agile and a fast runner and rabbit is polygamous and one male lives in a company of several females fertility is very high and a female reaches the maturity at the age of just 6 months and during an average lifespan of about 8 years the female breeds at least four times a very year each litter comprising of about 5 to 8 young ones that means per year it may produce around 10 to 16 <coughs> number of young ones so if it lives for about 8 years so just imagine how many young ones it can produce and this external features of this rabbit are as follows before going to the external features let me tell you one thing that nowadays people are rearing or domesticating these rabbits and they eat that particular meat of that rabbit as well as that has been used for experimental research works probably many of you must have seen these rabbit farms 
in different parts of the country so coming to the external features the first one is shape size and order sorry color the rabbit is a small squatty and bilaterally symmetrical animal of the size of a cat the length is about 40 cm from mouth to anus the whole body is covered by a soft uniform hair coat or fur and it conserves body heat as well as it keeps the body temperature constant that is at a range of about 38.8 degrees celsius because it is a mammal and it is a homeothermic animal and the color of domestic varieties is usually white or black and white however there are different colors to in different breeds of this rabbit so this is what the morphology of the rabbit and as you see here uh this is the diagram showing the different parts of that body of the rabbit and this is what just a photograph of acute rabbit now coming to the divisions of the body the body of rabbit is made of four distinct parts head neck trunk and tail head is large pear shaped and produced anteriorly into a large blunt snout or muzzle with a fleshy tip the head bears the mouth vibrisse that is uh, antennae like or mustache like uh, projections external nares eyes and external ears so these are the important structures that can be seen in the head of this rabbit then coming to the mouth the lower end of the snout carries terminally a small transverse slit like mouth opening it is bounded by the soft fleshy and movable upper and lower lips and the large upper lip is also called hare lip it is divided by a median vertical cleft into two lateral halves the cleft exposes the large upper incisor teeth which remain outside the buccal cavity even when the mouth is closed then vibrisse these are large stiff tactile hairs called whiskers or vibrisse and these are present on two lateral halves of the upper lip and near the eyes each vibrisse has a coil of sensory nerve ending round its base of the follicle coming to the external nares the external nares or nostrils are a pair of large oval slits present at the fleshy tip of the snout they are surrounded by a ma sorry moist bare area of the skin what is called as rhinarium they open into the large olfactory chambers then eyes two large prominent oval eyes are located one on either lateral side on the middle of the head that is what you can make out in the picture that is shown in one of the slides and each eye has movable upper and lower eyelids bearing very fine and short eyelashes and lying in the anterior corner of the each eye is a small white third eyelid or nictitating membrane it can be drawn across the cornea for safety from dust particles next one external ears or pinnae on either posterior lateral side of the head is present a large prominent movable fold of skin the external ear or pinna its basal part surrounds a short tubular external opening or the external auditory meatus closed below by a tympanic membrane or eardrum the two pinnae are held upright when the animal is on the alert but are laid back when it is frightened or running pinnae can be moved independently and collect sound waves from any directions that we can't do as you know next one is neck next division of the body the head is connected at a, a slight angle uh, sorry right angle to the trunk by a short but distinct neck it is quite flexible and permits the animal to move freely its head in all directions neck does not contain coelom and any bulky viscera then the next division is trunk the large and cylindrical trunk is further differentiated into two parts the anterior narrow stiff chest or thorax and the posterior broad 
soft bellied abdomen so trunk has two subdivisions again that is thorax and abdomen the thorax forms a firm bony cage supported laterally by sternum next important component of the trunk is teats the female has four to five pairs of mammary or milk glands and their ducts open on small projections called teats or nipples along the ventral surface of the thorax and abdomen teats are poorly developed or atrophic in case of males next one is anus there is no cloaca instead the posterior end of the abdomen just under the base of tail carries a small rounded aperture called the anus it is the external opening of the rectum on either side of the anus is a hairless depression the perineal pouch into which opens the perineal scent gland on the small papilla the secretion of these glands called perineal scent glands has a very strong odor characteristic of rabbit uh, probably when you have visited this rabbit farms you must have uh, sensed or you must have experienced this uh, strong odor that are there in that particular area of that rabbit form so that is what one of the important thing to be noted here then the next one important uh, structure is urinogenital aperture in the male rabbit urinogenital aperture lies in front of the anus at the tip of a small cylindrical muscular skin covered copulatory organ the penis the testis of male are in two loose thin walled skin bags called scrotal sacs which lie one on either side of the penis in the female rabbit penis and scrotal sacs are absent instead the slit like urinogenital aperture or vulva lies at the base of small rod like clitoris which is homologous to the penis of the male next important component is tail a small bushy or furry tail is attached to the hind end of the trunk it serves as a balancing organ during movements a white patch on the lower surface of the tail is used to give a warning signal in case of danger so that is why at the time of danger or if there is a threat by an enemy they will raise their tail and advertises that spot which is there on the lower part of the tail then limbs or appendages the trunk bears two pairs of pentadactyl limbs they are disposed in a crouch, crouching position when the animal is at rest or feeding and fore limbs are shorter while hind limbs are longer and stronger palm and sole are both hairy probably you must have observed this coming to fore limbs each fore limb consists of three pairs sorry three parts they are proximal upper arm or brachium and the middle fore arm or ante brachium and distal hand or manus so these are the three div- divisions of the parts present in the fore limbs like brachium ante brachium and manus the hand further includes wrist or corpus palm or metacarpus and five fingers ending in sharp pointed horny claws fore limbs are used for digging burrows and for absorbing the shock of a alighting after a leap then hind limbs each hind limb also consists of three parts proximal thigh or femur middle shank or crest and a distal foot or pes so the hind limbs again has three subdivisions like femur crest and pes while the fore limbs has brachium ante brachium and manus the foot further includes ankle or tarsus sole or metatarsus and four clawed toes and the first toe or hallux is absent hind limbs are mainly used in leaping you must have seen the leaping movements of these rabbits coming to the digestive system 
the digestive system includes organs concerned with mastication swallowing and digestion of food and elimination of undigested matter it consists of the alimentary canal and the associated digestive glands coming to the first important part that is alimentary canal the alimentary canal or digestive tract of rabbit or in general mammals is more specialized than that of lower vertebrates that you have studied uh, in digestion chapter already if it sorry it is a long and coiled tube of varying diameter extending from mouth to anus the various parts included are mouth vestibule buccal cavity pharynx esophagus stomach small intestine cecum large intestine and anus so these are the different subdivisions of the alimentary canal coming to the first part that is mouth the mouth is a relatively small transverse aperture present rather subterminally at the tip of the snout it is bordered by two soft fleshy and movable lips which i have i have already mentioned earlier and which remained covered with hairy skin on the outside and lined with mucous epithelium on the inside the upper lip is divided by a median vertical cleft because of this cleft uh, the large and sharp upper incisors are exposed externally even when the mouth is closed and this arrangement enables the rabbit to gnaw efficiently or effectively so it's an adaptation present in the mouth of this rabbit so this is what the diagram showing you the details of that uh, digestive system of this rabbit body so this is what esophagus only the uh, system is being shown here not the outer uh, outer covering of the body of this rabbit and these are the some different divisions of the stomach and this is what uh, the small intestine where you can see the joining of pancreas and the joining of the bile duct here sorry and this part is what is known as small intestine again and this is what ileum and this part is what is called cecum one of the major part of the large intestine and here you can see the structure what is called sacculus rotundus which is one of the important component in the alimentary canal of this rabbit body and there are some vertical slit like projections are seen along the colon region what are called as hostra the details of which i will explain it to you later and at the hind end of this hostra or what is called as colon there will be the presence of some beaded like projections in the rectum region and it is because of that nature of that colon sorry the rectum uh, these rabbits release their fecal matter in terms of or in the form of bead like structures and at the tip of this alimentary canal in the hind end or the posterior end you will come across with the anus here so this is what the diagrammatic view of the digestive system of rabbit this is very important from the point view of your examination so you have to practice this diagram coming to the vestibule the mouth opens into a narrow vertical slit like space the vestibule it is bounded externally by the lips and cheeks and internally by the gums of jaws mucus glands are found in its lining the next component is buccal cavity the inner of the mouth the vestibule leads behind into the oral cavity or the buccal cavity it is widest in the region of molotic it is lined with mucus membrane and contains the following structures the first one being palate you know in, even in human body or human buccal cavity the upper part or that is roof of the oral cavity is formed by the palate its anterior part is called the hard palate which is formed by the palatine processes of premaxillary and maxillary that is the bones of the upper jaw and the horizontal plates of the palatines 
It divides the original buccal cavity into a nasal passage above and the foot passage below. The lower surface of the hard palate bears prominent transverse ridges called the palatal rugae. The hard palate is extended back as the flexible, smooth and fleshy soft palate that is the posterior part of the palate. Then its posterior end hangs down freely into pharynx as a small flap called uvula. Even in human uh, digestive system we come across with this. And near its anterior end the hard palate is perforated by a pair of small openings called nasopalatine or canals leading into a nasal or olfactory chambers. And each canal largest sensory Jacobson organ the function of which is to recognize different types of food. So that is what the description about the palate, one of the important component of the buccal cavity. So this is what the detailed structures that can be seen in the buccal cavity of the body of this rabbit and this is for your reference and this also you have to uh, go through in detail. Then coming to the tongue, most of the floor of the buccal cavity is occupied by a large mobile and muscular tongue. Its under surface remains largely and attached to buccal floor except for the free rounded anterior end. Its dorsal surface is marked by a median groove. The dorsum also bears numerous papillae like in human tongue containing taste buds, and according to their shape and size, these papillae are of four kinds. They are fungiform, <coughs> sorry, filiform, circumvallate and foliate papillae. Even in the human tongue also, we come across with the same type of papillae except for the absence of this filiform papillae. The chief function of the tongue in rabbit or in mammals in general is the manipulation of food and mixing of saliva with food in the mouth cavity. Then about teeth. Teeth of rabbit are present on both the jaws. They are borne by the premaxillae and maxillae of the upper jaw and dentaries of the lower jaw. You know in all mammals the only bone that is present in the lower jaw will be the dentary bone <coughs> or mandibula bone. And they differ from those of the frog in several respects wherein teeth are thicodont here that is they are enclosed within the sheath the details of which I already explained you in dentition of mammals that is they are firmly embedded in cup like sockets of the jaw bones. Teeth of rabbit is also said to be diphyodont and heterodont and the dental formula of rabbit is I 2 by 1 C 0 by 0, PM 3 by 2 and M 3 by 2 that is equal to 2030 or 1023 it is equal to 28. So this will be the dental formula of rabbit which you will have to uh, always remember. Then incisors of the rabbit are characteristically elongated, sharp, chisel like which are meant for gnawing or cutting food. Probably have seen the eating habit of this rabbit and that habit is what is referred to as gnawing and that is being aided by this chisel like uh, teeth what are called as incisors. And these incisors they are very special that they grow throughout their life since they are open rooted. And canines are absent in both the jaws that you have seen in the dental formula due to which it creates a wide gap called diastema and this permit the two halves of the upper lip to be drawn behind the upper incisors as chip deflectors which is one of the very important movement uh, that is observed during gnawing and each half of the upper jaw has three premolars and three molars which Sorry, while each dentary bears only two premolars and three molars. So there is a difference in the number of these premolars and molars 
uh, when compared to the upper and lower jaws. The premolars and molars are called cheek teeth or grinders as they are useful in grinding the food and they are similar having broad crowns with sharp transverse enamel ridges and they are meant for grinding the food. So these are all some important features present in the buccal cavity of this rabbit. So let me stop at this level and continue the rest in next class.